break good, baby. Feeling good? Yeah. Feeling good. Looking good. Looking good. Feel good. You guys got your shots in? A little bit. A little bit. Let's go. Let's get it. Oh, it's uh, feels like a Friday, but it's a Tuesday. <laughs> That's but true. Yeah, because you're leaving. He's I'm leaving. leaving. Yeah, I'm leaving. leaving. It's pretty much Friday. I'll be back in a couple weeks, though. Episode 44. Episode 44. So I thought you were supposed to be on episode 17. What I happened? To, I mean, it took long enough. Yeah, we, got, he, we had to wait 27. <laughs> <laughs> 20 something more. It's not my fault. Man, yeah. you guys have had some heavy hitters, though. Like I know. I know. But you, you're bringing, you're bringing I know. the Riz, bro. Gotta, gotta bring, wait. What's the Riz? Gotta bring the energy. Yeah, what, do you know what the Riz is? What's the kid? Charisma? Yeah. What do kids call that? Yeah. See, I'm yep. hip. He's yeah. the main Still character. Young. Every time I'm out the mark, he got the rules. <laughs> yep. Every time. Main character no. energy. Main character energy, man. Cap. That, right. They in. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that being said, what's up, guys? And welcome to episode 44 of the Spread Good Podcast. My name is Brody Nicholas. Sitting right beside me, you know who he is. Mr. Celebrate Life. My good friend is here. We're going to talk about an important topic. How team doing? Month. Mark Domingo. Mark Domingo, guys. Nice to meet you. Mark Domingo, O T R L G L A D to be here. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> what? O T R L. Yeah, I paid for those letters. I'm still paying for those letters. What is, what is O T R L? Uh, it's occupational therapist, but I'm registered and I'm licensed. Wow. So I got to pay for those. Okay. Still paying those off. Damn. Dang. Hey, but it's your month, though, right? It is my month. Let's go. Oh, that's why you're month. here. Well, not my month, but. All of your months. My, <laughs> my people's. Okay. What, what do you guys do to celebrate OTRL month? Dang. That's a good question. I mean, I'm always working, so I you just try to advocate, let people know what we do. You know, every, we're, we're like the little brother of the rehab world. Everybody knows PT, but speech and OT, we don't get that much love. So I just want to spread that out with y'all and kind of let you guys know what we kind of do. Nice. That's what's up, man. I see you doing a lot of cool stuff. I love your stories on Instagram. <laughs> you know, you uh, you impact a lot of patients. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, it, I mean, they you can't write this stuff, right? They they just have their own stories. Everyone's got something to tell. So I'm just there to laugh it up and have somebody to kind of hear those stories. Like, and that's the most important thing. So um, yeah, it's fun. Every day's different. That's what's up, man. What yeah. got you into that work? Man, that's a great question. So I kind of fell into it. You know, I thought. You know, during my undergrad, I was going to be a teacher, right? Try to do the whole teaching path, work with kids. And then I started working with kids with like special needs, right? So kids that need extra help in the classrooms. Um, I kind of followed a, an OT in the school district. She was like, hey, you know, this is kind of a good career path for you. You're doing well with the kids. Why don't you go explore what OT was? I didn't know what it was. Kind of just fell into that lap. Thought I was going to work with kids. Went to all the whole OT school, got my graduate degree, and then ended up working at a hospital of all places. Because I was like, working with kids is tough. Yeah. And I'm sure you guys know it's kind of really tough to work with kids all the time, 24-7. So, yeah, I, I love it. I'm in the hospital. Couldn't, you know, I don't know where else I would be. It's the best place for me. Yeah, I've known you for a long-ass time. <laughs> Set uh, a sandbox. 30, 30 plus, 35. <laughs> and I'll be putting years. our age out there. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of years. <laughs> 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 I've known you for a long time. I didn't know you were going to be a OT working at a hospital. I yeah. never never envisioned you doing that. What do you think Mark was going to be when you were a kid? <laughs> when I was a kid? Yeah. Uh, this guy loves sports. He was all about football, True. True. basketball. True that. All about, all about all the sports. But then when we were older, yeah, I thought he was going to work with kids. Yeah. You did work with kids. I did. I did for a long you time. Took a, you took a turn and now... You're, you're kind of a nurse, right? Uh, not quite nurse. <laughs> okay, all right. But yeah, so we do work with nurses all the time. We work with doctors all the time, but we do the fun stuff. Um, like in the hospital specific, because OTs work everywhere. But in the hospital, you know, when the patients are ready to leave, the doctors usually say, all right, they're ready to leave the hospital. Where should they go? So we pretty much kind of give them our two cents about where it's safe for them to go home, right? So mm -hmm. the goal is always to get them home, but in some situations, they might need a little bit more therapy, get better, right? You gotta get better and better, better every day so that you can return to home and be safe at mm -hmm. home. So that's kind of the role that we play in terms of all the therapy. Um, so I get to do the fun stuff. I get to walk them and kind of use a restroom with them and make sure that they do that stuff safely before we send them home. Nice. Yeah. So it's all old people? For me, it is. Yeah, I work okay. with all old people, but, uh, you know, I have classmates. They work with kids, little ones, like, you know, 
you know, little, little protein. babies. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then some of them, like I said, they work in the school district. So you can work anywhere as an OT, just getting people to do what they want to do, get back to what they want to do. So for mm-hmm. kids, they want to play, go to school. They teach them to do that. Me I'm trying to get them home, do nice. all the fun stuff. Nice. Mm-hmm. So did you choose that? You chose to work with older people? I did. I did. I did. They, they just got the funniest stories. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. with kids, they're great. Um, but you know, you deal with the parents mostly. I'm sure you guys mm-hmm. know working with the nonprofit, you deal yeah. mostly with the parents and the families. But with, with me, I get to work with the actual patients. And they got stories for days. So talk about crazy stuff, some appropriate, some not so appropriate. <laughs> but, you know, it's never a dull moment with these, with these geriatrics, with, yeah. the, with the older people. See it on your stories. So yeah, hilarious. every time they got the funniest stuff. So that's, the, that's, the, that's the unedited version. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. y'all right. need to see that. <laughs> but I, I think the main reason we I asked you on the podcast was because yeah. my mom is old. You know, our parents are old. Yeah. Um, We're, they're getting there, right? Yeah. I think we've all had our stories with our parents, yeah. like, yeah. where we've had to step in, take care. Yeah, you did a couple years ago. Yeah. You still are, but, yeah, my mom's going through her, losing her memory. Every yeah. day is the same day with her now. She's just always saying the same things every day. Right. Um. But yeah, I wanted your advice on how to handle that. Yeah, so very, you know, common thing, you know, that we usually like to, you know, we end up seeing in the hospital comes out pretty frequently. Um, We have this thing in OT, we call it aging in place, right? How you can, you know, live your retirement years where you're comfortable, where you're at home, trying to do everything you need to do at home. And, you know, in certain situations, we need to do that and do that safely. So with the memory stuff, it's more so what we call like remediation, like remedying the situation and how we can we make it better for not only our patients, but the family involved. And also um, what we call compensation. What can we do to add strategies to kind of do this? So there's different tips, right? For our patients themselves, it's usually how can I set myself reminders, right? So I think you were mentioning that uh, Mama Lou already writes notes for herself, right? That's a great thing because she's doing it. It's not like you guys are telling her, hey, do this. This is what you need to do today. It's her writing. She knows what to do. Uh, journaling helps too because she can say, what am I doing today? What did I do today? And then a chart wheel. Let's say she has a specific task or a calendar for the day. You know, she can cross it off and say, this, these are my daily tasks, what I got to do. It just gives her reminders all the time and it's coming from her as opposed to you guys telling her what to do. Okay. And then the big thing I think for all of us in terms of our families and, you know, everyone involved is just having patience, right? You got to give them time, you know. Mama Lou's great. She remembers me. So. <laughs> I mean, she remembers things. She doesn't remember today, though. She doesn't yeah. remember five minutes ago, ten minutes ago. But right. she remembers everything else. Yeah, like she talks about the past all the time. Yeah. Every time I'm there, she's like, why are you not married? So I know she knows me. She <laughs> yeah. loves me. Yeah. But it's like those day-to-day tasks, right? Yeah. Five, ten minutes, twenty minutes through the day. What can you do? And it's just all about <clears throat> having things in place and then having her, you know, write things down, crossing things off, and, and kind of just supporting herself in that way and then you guys are just supervising as opposed to telling her what to do or what not to do yeah i think a a lot of people gave me that advice when i shared on social media they just said be patient yeah let her handle it instead of right telling her what to do or getting stressed out with her that she keeps forgetting and telling her that she's forgetting like work with her on remembering yeah however she does write herself notes and then she'll look at the note and be like what does this mean Oh, I don't remember what this means. Right, right, right. So it's like, it's frustrating because she's writing all these notes. She's trying to remind right. herself of things. But maybe it's when she gets stressed out. I or, think so. Yeah. So a lot of times the stress happens when it's a lot going on, right? Yeah. So depending on the notes. So a lot of times I'll see if it's a lot of like traffic or noise. Like if there's a whole written note that's like a whole page long you can't really focus on those details. It's gotta be super simplified. So what we do is we try to simplify every problem. Find a problem, simplify it as best as possible, and then try to kind of attack it from there. So if it's one thing for the day, let's say, I don't know, we gotta pay a certain bill if it's not automated. We kind of just put that one thing, maybe put in a picture there to kind of help remind you of what it's for, but it's always all about simplifying it so that it doesn't add to stress. Right? Yeah. Stress is a big thing that kind of makes things worse. 
I'm sure you guys see it all the time when yeah, you guys yeah. are all stressed out. It makes things worse. And when you're trying to help somebody else, kind of adds to the fuel to the fire <clears throat> as opposed to help putting it out. Yeah. It, there's a lot of times where she'll get confused. Yeah. We'll be like, well, we can't explain it to you because we don't even know what you wrote that for. And then everyone gets all stressed out. She forgets a lot more things. So, yeah, I think the biggest thing that I got from people on social media is just to be patient. Yeah, how was that? Be there was patient. a lot of people hit you up, yeah, right? Yeah, a lot of people hit me up. A lot of people awesome. hit me up about stories of their own, like, family members. Right. But a lot of people are like, there's no real, <clears throat> like, correct strategy, yeah. I guess. It's just you have to be patient. You can't, um, you can't get mad at someone for their new reality. Right. It's my mom's new reality right. that she's forgetting things. Right. And I can't be upset with her for that. I just have to work with her on making her new reality better. Right. right. Um, I mean, we're getting to that age, right? Like where our parents, yeah. their friends and stuff like that. You guys hear, probably hear it. I know I do mm. all the time. Like their parents are going through this something and then who's left to take care of them. It's, you know, our generation, it's all of us having to take care of them. And like I said, we've all kind of had our own you know, different stories about having to take care of our parents and kind of going through that stuff. And the most, you know, what I see all the time in the hospitals specifically is when the patients come in, the families have that time too. I always say our normal day is probably that family's worst day ever. They're in the hospital, right? So they need that time and they need to understand the patients as well. And we need to kind of give them resources as the therapists to kind of hear what they're going through and kind of like, you know, what do you need to do? Sometimes we even have to tell them, hey, you need to go home. Like mm -hmm. you're here 24 seven, go home, go take a shower. You yeah. know, you gotta take care of yourself. I think I've been watching your guys' last couple of podcasts. It's all about filling the buckets, right? You gotta fill your bucket first <laughs> before you go water somebody else's plant or like, mm -hmm. you know, I think you use the whole the seat belt thing on the airplane, right? You mm -hmm. got to fasten your seat belt and put yeah, the life vest mask, on yeah. before you go help your mom or you yeah. got to do that. So mm -hmm. I was going to ask you guys, you know, stress, is that something that's adding to you? Like, is there added responsibility for you? Well, it's, I'm taking over the, the home care business. Right. And my mom is, she keeps forgetting that, that you're doing she's that. supposed to let it go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like just yesterday... She did something that she wasn't supposed to do. And I've been telling her for the past like four or five weeks. Right. And she's like, oh yeah, I remember. I promise. This is the last time I promise. Right. Like she just said it like, like she knows she's going to forget. So she wrote another note. Hopefully she remembers that she doesn't have to take care of that. Yeah. But I feel like every time she goes in there, part of it is she wants to stay busy. Yeah. She doesn't want to just be at home. She feels like that will make her decline even more. Right. But staying busy means... <clears throat> working on a business and working on that business and confusing everybody just stresses her out even more. Right. Yeah. Because a mean, lot of the workers are like, you already told us this. Right. Or like, we already have this scheduled. And I, I do that a lot because she's always reminding me of the right. same thing. I was there for like four or five hours and yeah. she reminded me to eat right. for like 30 <laughs> she times. She told you like I 10 just times. Ate. I just ate right in front of her face yeah. and she didn't remember that I ate. Right, right, right. So what am I supposed to do? Write a note, mom, I ate. No, I mean, it's, it's, that goes back to the whole patience thing, right? Yeah. It's just like, you know, like you said, that's her new reality. And you kind of have to almost think about it. That's her routine. She's done it for so long, right? That's, we're all creatures of habit. You do it, you know, you have a daily routine for so long, so long, so long, just because, of, you know, conditions change and you're supposed to give up that reins to, you know, which, which you and Atashell, you guys do a good job taking care of that stuff but it's hard to give up that role, right? So you almost have to replace it, you know, do something <clears throat> more meaningful. Like, I mean, that's the whole thing with OT is what is a meaningful occupation or activity, meaningful activity. So if it's not work, which, you know, we're trying to give that up, help her find something that she loves, right? I mean, you know, if it's taking her more out on more walking, you know, yeah. you know, you know, activity or, you know, going on, on more trips, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, or going That's on more vacations. Yeah, yeah. She going wants to like watch that. the kids. Yeah. So you let her do that. Right. But yeah, that's that's a good point. Like right. I never thought of it as it's it's her routine to ask us Correct. if we ate. To Correct. make sure she handles this thing every week. Right. And she's just forgetting that she's supposed to 
like give that routine up. Right, right. So I don't even think point. that's specific to maybe just your mom. You know, yeah. all of our aunties. Yeah. I'm sure you know. You go to a family party. Yeah. Brody, did you eat? Like, yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> how many times do you get that? Yeah, Every like time you walk. Thirty into, times a day. Yeah, that's yeah, right. So. so it's just our culture. You know, it's just you know their roles as moms is to make sure that you're taken care of. And then it's probably hard, as much as it's hard for us to take the role of caregiver, Yeah, mm-hmm. it's going to be tough for them to take that switch that role from caregiver to being cared for. Right? Okay. So a little bit different roles, shifts, and everyone's just doing the best that they can. So, you know, the best part is doing what you can and then knowing that you got support, family, friends and stuff to kind of do that as you progress. Yeah. Mama Lou loves me. So tell her, hit me up, you know, yeah. anytime. I know yeah. I'm her favorite from yeah, the sandbox. Speaking of traveling, she commented that she wants to go to Japan on my Facebook post. There so it is. She does See? want to go to she Japan. She said she wants to go to Japan. She's so. been wanting to go to Japan, Philippines. Yeah. She wants to go everywhere. But another part of that is um, my dad is afraid to take her places. Cause oh, because she it's, forgets so it's just going to be them. Yeah. Or right. it's, it's going to be them and maybe my brother. Right. But then that's another person for my dad to take right. care of. So my mom hasn't driven in maybe a couple years now. Because the last time she drove, she forgot where she was. So... Yeah. I mean, it's stressful on my dad, too. But I think all these things that we talk about, all these strategies, uh, I just need to tell my dad and we can yeah. talk about it and figure and, it out. And that's a, that's another thing, too. I think with your pop, you know, your dad taking, you know, so much responsibility. We see it all the time, like when the family members are here in the hospital and the wife is in the hospital, we have to take care of the husband, not only the patient, but the husband, too. So I'm sure your dad, you know, needs a little bit of time, respite time, you know hang back, drink beer with him, you know, yeah. watch some sports. He needs some time, you know, himself too, because like we said earlier, you can't take care of, you know, your brother and your mom unless he's taken care of too. So it's always good to kind of check in yeah. with your pop, you know, make sure that he's good all the time. And every yeah. time I see him, we just talk about sports. That's all he talks about, <laughs> like, That's all he talks about, Golf. oh, the Lakers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you but. know. But yeah, I mean, I got I got messages from people yeah. who I grew up with on my street, who their yeah. parents still live on the street, and every time we drive past there, my mom talks about them. But like, she was sending me messages that it's crazy that we're parenting our parents now. Yeah. And it yeah, I never looked at it from her perspective. She probably right. doesn't want me taking care of her. Yeah, it's uh, it's a, it's a, it's role yeah. reversal, right? She's been taking care of you guys for so long. Now that she you know she's being taken care of. It's hard to give some of that role up and that those responsibilities over to you, even though you guys are doing a good job, it might be tough for her. So just take a little bit more time, be patient, and then not replace that role fully, but finding other things to kind of make sure that she's still fulfilled and you know, like going on little day trips. Those yeah, we see those yeah. on your stories. I was like, damn, that's dope. It was dope, but then the next day she's like, oh, did the kids go with us to, to dinner? <laughs> Pictures, my place? boy. <laughs> I was like, yeah, here's a video. Yeah, right. She's like, oh, yeah, I remember. Right. See, so that helps. And it's a lot of repetition, too, right? Yeah. Might be hard forming new stuff, but then, you know, living the moment as it happens is kind of like the biggest thing that you can do um, in those types of situations. Yeah. So with all the support you've been getting on social, which I think is awesome, so many people reaching yeah. out, has anybody uh, kind of given you any resources or... Um, advice on how to like take care of yourself through this time because right. um, obviously I know the type of person you are you're so focused on making she, sh- making sure she's good make sure your dad's good make sure your brother's good making sure your kids and your wife are good like what are you doing for you right now um, I mean I'm still like trying to hang out with the homies mm-hmm. have a beer watch sports come through here do our skits work on things that don't stress me out um, but a lot of people did hit me up and just said like don't be so hard on yourself. Give yeah. yourself grace because you can't control this as much as you want to. You can't control it. Um, all you can control is like how you react to it. So a lot of people are just telling me like, try your best to be patient. Give yourself grace. I mean, my cousin gave me some tips on on a book to read. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people <clears throat> gave me tips on like, you know, trust and putting in like her money into different things. So. A lot of people gave me a lot of resources, which was cool, but I think the best thing that anyone said, like you said, is just be patient right. and take care of yourself first. Because, yeah, I know my mom wouldn't want me stressing out about this. And that's part of the reason why I didn't want to talk about this on the podcast, because I didn't know if she would see this and get <laughs> upset about it. But then I'm like, she's going to forget you. after she watches it. So it's okay, as long as she's not watching it every day. 
Right. And I don't remember it, right? <laughs> so, I mean, I, yeah. It's like I, 50 just, first dates, like tomorrow's a new day. Yeah. So, get mad at you today, but then tomorrow we're good. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, all the, all the love from social media has been amazing. Um, and I didn't know how many people have actually gone through it. Like right. a lot of people that are mutual friends, a lot of like our friends' wives, I yeah. guess, I didn't know we're going through it. So it's crazy to see. And even like one of our really good friends, her mom is uh, going through it. And she gave me advice to talk to the doctor directly. Right. Um, instead of, because I've gone with my mom to some appointments and she would always relay whatever she wants to me. But if I could just talk to the doctor directly to get better, to get a better understanding of who right. she is and how to handle it, um, it would be better for me. So, yeah, yeah a lot of Because the more you amazing. understand, it's like, you know, sometimes too much information is, is you know, detrimental. Yeah. But, you know, at least you can ask your questions, right? Because if you're getting it secondhand, right? Yeah. Like whatever your dad tells you, or whatever your mom tells you from that recap, it's very, you know, yeah. it's it's filtered, right? Yeah. As long as, you know, I always, that's why I always say, whatever questions you have, let's answer it right away when I talk to patients, because the more information I think I can give you, it eases your mind a little bit, or it gives you a better understanding of how to maybe approach a problem and kind of do it to where you can better help your mom and dad, yeah. um, as opposed to like having it here say like, oh, okay, I think I know what the doctor meant, and then try to figure that out because then yeah i think the more information is the better so yeah and yeah. i need to hear it directly from the doctor because my mom's like nah i'm just getting old yeah it's, it's fine so so with <laughs> us um I, what i think i'm hearing is like a lot of potential for burnout you guys ever hear that term yeah. before yeah so we we hear it all the time in the medical field like the nurses that are there now are brand new nurses from when covid hit not you know i worked through that whole covid thing uh, burnout is legit. It's real, but it's not only for us. It's for family members and stuff like that too. That's why I think um, with the nonprofit, you know, you guys not only you know do great stuff for the kids, but the whole family benefits, right? Mm -hmm. When going on these trips, and then I think you guys see that a lot is you know the the family members have to go through the majority of the stuff with the kids, so like. I mean, in terms of burnout, do you feel like that's, you know, something that you have to deal with in this specific situation? Yeah, for sure. Right. Burnout's been uh, been real for the past couple of years. Right. Um, and well, how I, do you deal with it? Or like, how have you heard um, family members have been dealing with the burnout of taking care of their kids in that situation? Um, for me, right now, how I'm dealing with it is I'm talking on a podcast about that <laughs> shit. Yeah, uh, you talk to therapists if you want to. Yeah, you talk to your friends, yeah. um, and we give ourselves. I'm trying to give us things to look forward to, like my mom's birthday. Yeah. Um, next year we're gonna travel, hopefully to the Philippines. Yes. But my mom's 75th birthday next year, right. so it's like just giving ourselves things to look forward to, so that we're not just going through every day like with no purpose. I guess. Right. Right. So yeah, that's how I've been handling it. I love that. Do you go love through that. those like episodes too, Brody? Like burn out here with work and stress or anything like that yeah man for sure because that's what yeah. i have to deal with like even though yeah. we give a lot of information I'm trying to avoid burnout myself and you know maybe my sit our all of our situations are different <clears throat> it's one of those things like I, I always like to hear what people do to avoid that burnout mm -hmm. and it's like it yeah. might help <laughs> yeah no it's, it's a good question man so you know what happened with my mom you yeah. know a few years ago and that right. was crazy she's um, basically fully recovered now, back right. to work, living her best life, she which is awesome. great at the gallery. Yeah, yeah. Like, Thank you, man. Yeah. She's doing it. She's uh -huh. doing it. So, um, you know, but that was, uh, it happened so fast. I remember, I think I took like a week off of here, like right. doing stuff. Right. Um, and I was basically flying and driving back and forth from here to Sacramento right. for all the end of life stuff at the time yeah. and then still running all this business stuff. And I, so I never actually stopped. I remember I took exactly one week off because I remember it was so cool that everything ran without me. That was right, the first time right. I was like, wow, I didn't even know this, yeah, you gave this that shit up. could actually go. Yeah, yeah. But I, I still just stayed busy. Right. Um, and then it went all the way for the last four years and everything just kept growing, getting bigger and staying busier and traveling. Right. And then I just hit burnout last year to yeah. a point where I just said, I'm going to take this whole quarter off. Did you know at 
that that was the point or was it's, it it was crazy i like knew last april yeah and i kept pushing the pedal till december because i just thought like oh yeah. every i just i'm that good i can right, always right, right. make it yeah. work i can always make everybody There's happy yeah, and then it, happy. it just hit that i was like yo it was like i said it was bad in april and then it's bad in the summer and then october was a shit show yeah, and the next yeah. you know it's like the holidays again right and then i was like i'm gonna take take some time off so crazy what i did for therapy is i me and my sister trade our dog back and forth oh, so i had macy come down here for a few months yeah and do just hiking bringing right. her here to hq every day with me did something for yeah. me like a therapy dog, your dog like, yeah your yeah. dog is gonna make you be active it's crazy you have to like take responsibility yeah Half and so awesome. so yeah so that was cool <clears throat> and then this quarter went by and yeah definitely going through yeah some some stuff like health stuff right now with some some people i'm close to so right. it's just like uh yeah, the way I deal with it is taking expectations off myself right. with things that aren't important. Right. Like, like this. Like everything I build is important, but it's not as important as like, yeah. oh yeah, like making memories with my family. Right, or, right, right. And so, um, yeah, I was just like, she really feeling the burnout. Coincidentally enough, this last month, I haven't really right. talked about it, but I just booked two weeks of travel. Like, yeah. I'm going to Chicago tomorrow. Right. Just literally a couple of days ago, I was like, I'm going to Hawaii next week. Oof. Like, I'm just do, I'm just living because right. it's like I don't know if I'm gonna get tomorrow. Yeah, I don't know if I think, all the homies are going to get tomorrow. <clears throat> Not to be pessimistic, but right. just got to make sure we find time to live. Yeah, I think that's yeah. the, for me, it's the biggest thing that we see most people do is, is when you do get those opportunities, because we're, you know, we're pretty blessed to have those opportunities yeah. to go travel and do that. But it's such a reset. Like, I don't know how you guys feel. You guys travel way more than I do. <laughs> but when I go on vacation, even the little stuff, right? It's like when I get back, I'm like, okay, there's, it's not that I forgot about those things that we got to take care of, but I'm, you know, there's a reset button that I'm ready to attack mm -hmm. it and I'm ready to go. So I think it's important, like you guys said, you know, take care of yourself, but you know, there's responsibilities there and then mm -hmm. making sure you don't dump it all on our shoulders, right? There's, there's other people there that are, you know, we're blessed to have people to help, right? You guys got friends and family and a good support system here. So I think that's the best way to do it. Stay patient. And then, like I said, you're never doing it all by yourself, right? There's always somebody there to help you guys out. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I need to remind myself of that all the time. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't need to do this all on my own. It's like a few people message me like, oh, yeah. you always seem like the rock for everybody. True. And while that felt good, it was also like, ah, maybe I shouldn't be, be that way because... <laughs> It's like, thanks, I'm, I'm the rock, too, but then yeah. somebody got to help me out, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, thank you for your advice, sir. Yeah, man. Now we're going to lighten up the mood a little bit. <laughs> yeah. um, kind of, it's kind of, <laughs> got kind of serious there for serious, a minute. Huh? It's real, though. And when mom sees us, she's going to be like, man, you guys are talking serious stuff. Yeah. See, That's we good. We could do That's that good. sometimes. We could. We're serious. So. Uh, oh, anyway, uh, um, about the last podcast, we got to talk about those love languages saying that we... Okay, okay, <laughs> okay what? what? Saying that we physically touch all inappropriate? Yeah. Is that true? Us? Y'all just don't remember it. Our yeah. friends, yeah. <laughs> Our friends, yeah. Uh, yeah. Man, you're right. It's probably me that does most of it. But, I mean, that's the way we grew up, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean rough housing, but... <laughs> No, no. Not, not, in that, not in that way. No, you well, I heard this one time at band camp. I heard basketball camp got lit. Yeah. In that sleepover? Canceled, what? Bro. You got canceled, bro. But, oh. but yeah, all right. Well, well we're really going to lighten the mood up. Let's get it. Y'all know the full, uh, the theme song, The Full House? Yes, sir. Yep. Sing it right now. Everywhere you look, everywhere there's a heart. There's a heart. <laughs> see, you see it. I, I don't know. I don't know the words. I don't know the words. Bro, Jesse, right? Isn't Jesse? that crazy? Hey, so that's, I don't know the words. We were on a walk the other day, and I'm singing my ass off with Katie uh -huh. to the song, but I realized, everywhere you look, uh -huh. every da, da, da. And I told Katie, I was like, there's a heart. What's I know the that. word? <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'm not going to look. I'm not going to cheat, but right. we're going to talk about this on the pod. Because I feel like this is one of those monumental songs everybody knows. But everybody if a million dollars it. is on the line, could you really get those lyrics up? That's true. See? Fresh Prince, we good. Oh, 100%. <laughs> but why, why is that different, though? I don't know. Right? I think it's just more just so melody. the melody, just, yeah. You, you remember, so, the, you remember melody. the melody, but the lyrics. So, I can tell you what they were doing. They were driving down the Golden Gate Bridge. Right? <laughs> see, let's see. Full House <laughs> theme song. Okay. See, there's a heart. What? I can't even what the fuck he say? Yeah. What does he say? There's a place. I saw somebody who needs you. That's the 
that's tough. When you're when lost, lost out there, there and, and all, all alone. alone. Someone is with you. You play the karaoke, it'll karaoke. carry you home. <laughs> Everywhere, Everywhere you, you look. look. I know that part. We know that part. Hell no, so we lost a million dollars, bro. It's not just me. No. That's how I told Katie. I we like, lost a million dollars right there. I really thought I knew that song. I sing it every day, yeah. and I don't, I don't know it. I mean, sing it every, why are you singing it every day? <laughs> uh, I'm kind of catchy, bro. Ever since Cooler House came back, and then I was like, yo, it's kind of. Oh, dang. Yeah, I don't so know. I, mean, I think it's on HBO Max, yeah, so you can rewatch yeah, it. Yeah, watch it. There was a new one, right? Uh, a Fuller House. Fuller House. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I don't know if it's the same. It's not the same song. No. I don't think so. I don't think it's the same it song. It might be. It might be. But That's wild. So <laughs> have you guys traveled together? Yeah, yeah. a little bit. What was the craziest, domestic craziest stuff. trip? Crazy. Like domestic beer? Uh, On international flights? or Craziest no. trip. I, mean, I don't know about crazy. We've been to Vegas, Miami. Oh, yeah, you guys Hawaii. are. Hawaii. We've been to Hawaii together. We were New York. To, we were supposed we to, to New go York. to uh, Korea and Japan. We, went to, we were supposed to go to Korea and Japan. Um, we were supposed to April. go March. Oh, or, March. Yeah, yeah, February or March. Like around this time on in 2020. Yeah. That's when COVID hit. And yeah. we got canceled. Yeah, Everything yeah. got canceled. Everything and we haven't got, gone. And we still haven't gone. My parents are actually in Japan right now. Oh, damn. They're coming back pretty soon, but they're taking the trip that we're supposed to take. Yeah. So All right. They're living mm-hmm. there. Do that's it for like, the ones who can. That's right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but nothing crazy. We're good boys, right? Yeah. Every time we're in mm-hmm. Vegas. Phoenix. We do. Phoenix, yeah. Mostly domestic yeah. stuff. When these guys... I was handling my stuff while these guys were in Europe and doing all the fun, fun, fun stuff. Yeah. And now I got kids, so I <laughs> not I'm gonna travel again for a long time. <laughs> we'll see. We'll Unless see. It's we'll family make it trip. Family trip. It'll be a family trip. Um. So. Mm-hmm. That's April, good. Acid April rain, is man. OT month, right? Yes, sir. It's also shout out to my OTs out there. What'd you write on there? Oh, it's Filipino food month. It's Filipino Food Month. Man, we suck at being Filipino. We didn't even know that. <laughs> I didn't know that. I had to I didn't know that. you had a month for Filipino food. I guess some dudes from the Bay Area or Daily City, they were just like, you know, this is our month. Let's run it. Let's run and then it. we're going to look next month as that month too. See? <laughs> it's like, no, yeah. isn't it October is like Filipino some month? I don't see? know. All right. Well, we grew up here, so I don't know. What was your, what was your top Filipino foods? I was going to ask you guys, because every time on my stories, we do, I do, I like to do the top five. Right, top so five. top five, whatever. Okay. So Filipino food month. What is y'all top five that you can't not include in the top five? We go to auntie's birthday party, right? What, what can we not have there? You got time? Take well, think about it. <laughs> well, you gotta have adobo. <laughs> that's a. I think that's a heavy hitter. I feel like lumpia has been at every single party I've been to in my life. Right. And all our non-Filipino friends, yeah, 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 yeah. that's probably their go-to, right? right? Is lumpia. But something I didn't grow up with, and I just fell in love with it yeah. when I started going to the Philippines, yeah. seasick. Yeah. Oh, I, that's, that's my top five. That's, that's my, my number top one. That sure. might be number one for me, bro. I thought like chicken in a saw. <laughs> well, that's your I get, spot. I, I get it at Mang in a saw. Okay. Yeah, I get oh, the seasick okay, at Mang okay. in a saw. That's the spot. That's the spot. He knows. All right. Mm, okay. So that's that's probably that that's for sure included. Mine is a uh, barbecue steak, synagogue. Chicken or pork? Pork. Dang, you like the swan. Pancit <laughs> all together. Um and uh what's what's the fucking I mean what's the <laughs> what's the pork shoulder? The the crispy stuff? Oh, the nah, you talking about the uh crispy pata. Yeah, that's fine. Man, that's bad for your cholesterol, bro. You taking <laughs> your stand. Is, <laughs> is my that another thing? You better take care of that. Through the roof, but I'm taking the fiber pill, so we're good. <laughs> okay, you gotta drink a lot of water. Right? Drink, drink that acid I'm water. Drinking water. <laughs> what what about yours? What about, Dang. Okay. Um I think seasick's definitely on there. Crispy pot that gotta be on there. All the bad stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, for Everything sure. bad for you. Is on my top five. Um Filipino breakfast. Oh yeah. That's got to be included. So uh, for me, you know, the topsy log is always good or the, you know, the mm-hmm. longanisa is always good. But the fish, the uh, bangos, the yeah. milk fish, right? The vinegary fish, that's got to be in my top five. Yeah. Um, and then the, the nasty, well, not the nasty stuff, but the, you know, the, the ones. Balut? <laughs> nah, nah, nah. <laughs> Hell no. Nah. Every time somebody says, hey, you eat balut, I was like, nah, bro, that ain't me. I grew up here. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I was born here. Uh, but the dinaguan. Oh, the pig's blood. The pig's blood. Yeah. It's yeah, not, like you that. know, chocolate. They always told us it was chocolate and meat. That ain't <laughs> it chocolate. Look, it looked like Filipino mole. Yeah. <laughs> Filipino mole, right? right? 
So that's that's definitely in there. I can't not have, put that in. Do there. you eat bitter melon? Nah, man. I fuck with bitter melon. Is it oh. Palaya? Yeah. You eat that? that? No, no. I have haven't had that. It? But have you guys had? Uh, no, I haven't. Durian? No. I haven't tried it either. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. But Mm-mm. No. I, don't, I heard. I, don't I heard you stank for like a week I if you eat open that. Open that up in here. Yeah, we'll have to air it out for a, for a week. I don't like that. But we should go to the Philippines. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Well, you do. You guys usually. You know, you guys have your crew out there, right? Yep, yep. I'll yeah, be out there in December. Oh, you going in December? <laughs> I, might I go think too. I'm going. In, I'm going in December. I'm, if y'all need an extra hand, put me to work. Nice. Hey. And so oh. April is also pickleball month. Dang, you guys play that? Nope. I, I played once, and I'm about How to play it? a lot more because of Brett. Oh, okay. Right, he's he's pro, semi pro. Semi pro pickleball. You know, <laughs> the first time I heard of that was at the hospital. Somebody on our boards at the hospital says, "What do I want to do? What are my goals for three months?" So somebody put pickleball in there, and I was like, "What the hell is that?" And I asked the patient straight up. So what are you gonna do with pickles? They're like, "No, it's a sport." And they showed me the YouTube video. I was like, "Oh, it's like." Tennis, but not tennis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they get down though. Yeah. But yeah, have you played? I haven't. Bro. But like, I have cousins that say it. Some of my homies are playing it. I'm like, it's like tennis, but not. But it's not it's tennis. tennis guy. But that's this why is I haven't played. Thing. That's why I haven't played. He's a purist. I, I will. I will play with Brett. I want to see how good he is. All right. We're gonna. We're gonna. Yeah, battle. you guys have to invite me. I'll record it. Oh yeah. If I no, jump in, we're gonna do some stuff out there for sure. They be sacking them things. People yep. take it serious it's too. Dead ass. Serious. Like, damn. We're gonna have a tournament. We're gonna have a tournament soon. We actually That's might put a the... court in the back of HQ. Dude. So you have to works. draw the lines, or you just... yeah, tape, <laughs> tape the lines. Just tape it down. That <laughs> yeah. works. Uh, and that's a lot of stuff for April. What else? Maybe I'll get my month. April, April nine today uh-huh. is National Name Yourself Day. Name so yourself day. If you could give your a name for yourself that isn't your name, what would it be? I already did that, <laughs> Brody you... Nicholas. Oh yeah. Why? Oh, he doesn't know that. What's the story? I don't know what it is. That's not true. That's not my IRS name. Nope. Shut up. That's crazy. But you, did you give it or yeah. did your parents no, give it? No, I made, I turned into Brody at 19. No way. Yeah. You did, did you know that when you first met him? No. Nah, I, I knew it later. Okay. Because we were doing like a business paperwork and, and like, he's like, yeah. who am I doing stuff with? I was like, oh, oh my bad. That's, that's my government name. <laughs> <laughs> that's my IRS name. Yeah. But no way. So, I mean, that's pretty cool. You you named yourself so that. that's cool. April 9th should be like my second that's, birthday. Yeah, yeah we should throw true. a party. That's for real. Yeah. Let's do it. Team Brody. Yeah. That's what, what name would you give Damn. yourself? Damn. I mean, to be honest, I never thought about it. Um, But the thing is with me is I wish I had a middle name. So, Brody, mm. did you give yourself? So, so yeah. Okay. So, I'll just tell you. Tell me. All I right. want to hear it. We yeah. out here for a reason. So, so my real name <laughs> is Brandon. Okay. Nicholas Odeon. Oh. So when I became a musician, I wanted to keep my personal life separate. Sure. So Brandon and Odeon, Brody, yeah. Nicholas, Brody Nicholas. Oh, now it makes sense. Yeah. And then after the music stuff, I started building other stuff, but people right. knew Brody. So I was right. like, let's just keep just it easy. Just run with Brody. But then it's just awkward with these random cousins that come to events all drunk. Right. Your name's Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm like, why are they like, calling you Brody? Be cool. Be cool. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. No way. Oh, that makes sense. That yeah. totally does make sense. Yeah. Well, with me, it's like, I never had a middle name. So maybe if my mom gave me a middle name, then I can be like every other Filipino. M yeah. or J or M or Mark, A-M. Mark Ann. <laughs> Mark Ann. I just said I love you. Hey, yo, April uh, 9th is today. Give yourself a middle yeah, name. Yeah, that's tough. Let's go. Well, What's it going to be? With us, we, you know, with the Filipinos, we just give, you know, kids these random ass names, right? Like, <laughs> like my, my niece is Gianna, but we call her Pai Pai. We're like, oh, how, yeah. f- yeah, how y'all get random. that? How y'all get Pai Pai, right? Because my sister and my brother call her Gigi Pai. So we're like, all right, we're going to take the pie part and just call her pie pie. Random ass shit, right? Yeah, Random ass no stuff. Sense. <laughs> all right, now that we're on this vibe, let's talk about, you know, back in the day. Yeah. White people do the same thing. Do Rich, it. Richard? Dick? Oh, Dick. That's I had true. To, I had to interview a doctor in sixth grade because it was like a yeah, yeah. whatever career thing. And How you get that? I, bro, I was like, I was remember, like, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm you know, Dr. Richard. Like, yeah. You want to talk to Dick? Right. I was like, no, I don't want to. <laughs> I was like, I was I in sixth grade. Man. I was like, no, I, I want to talk to Richard. Richard. Like, oh, and then like, and hear back. Oh, yeah, yeah, Dick, come mm-hmm. in. And took the call. And then I didn't have Google back then. Right. You know what I'm saying? Man, right. you're really showing the age. Right. Uh, I had AOL and it was too slow to look it <laughs> up AOL at the time. Right. I had to ask my mom. I was like, I talked to, I couldn't even say the word because right. that was a bad word. Bad word. <laughs> yeah. So it was a weird time in sixth right. grade. But. Well, you hear that all the time. It's like you get the government name. Right, right. And then they're like, the, they're like, the patient wants to be called Bud. 
I'm like, why is he Bud? <laughs> right? His name is Henry or some shit. You know right, what I mean? Right. So I guess they do it too, but I think the way we do it is like. Filipinos just make up random sounds. Yeah, yeah it's just sounds. Like, it's all yeah. the sounds. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you drop it in the in the cup. Ding. Yeah, I know oh, someone. Ding. Someone ching. Yeah. Ching. <laughs> kind of. Put it out there. Hey, that's a great. That's a great. Name. <laughs> I love that name. Uh, <laughs> but you can't give yourself a name yet. Bro. I mean, I don't know. Did you have you thought about that? Yeah. What would you call yourself? My name would be Aljamar. Why is? It? <laughs> Sorry to laugh, but why Aljamar? <laughs> Aljamar, bro. It's it's a Filipino way of making a name. It's my dad's name. Oh, okay. My uh, my mom's dad's name and my dad's dad's name. Put and together. Then you smush it. Yeah. Oh, that's that sounds like I, a new Instagram handle to me. That's right. Starting Hashtag today. that. Hashtag Aljamar. Aljamar. Yep. Dang, so now I can't. How am I gonna follow that? <laughs> I don't know. You gotta just, you gotta pick a name. I was like, you always want to be called like Juwan or Jermaine Juwan. or something yeah. like that, so I could be Mark M J Domingo. Uh, M J. See, but I like that. I, I don't like have that. a middle name. My mom got my mom and dad got lazy, bro. They was like, he's good with Mark. I also had to change my name because my original initial initials yeah. are B O. <laughs> so little league. So B O smells like B O. I'll be up at the plate at off. The baseball, yeah, right, bro. Right. I'll be off, man. Fuck my life, bro. <laughs> so the moment I got the chance. <laughs> as soon as I turned yeah, nineteen, crazy. it's over. You know what's crazy though? The, crazy. the first name. I don't know if I told you this. For like a two weeks, I was Brody Jones. Cause Mike Jones, oh, so I was like, "Oh, Brody Jones," that. I and I, I was Jones. like, two weeks be in, Jones. I was like, "Nah, nah I gotta, See? I gotta make it original." Jermaine? I could be MJ. You could Brody be Jones, huh? Brody Jones. Brody Jones. It's kind of hard for like two If weeks. you would have introduced yourself as Brody Jones when I first met you, I would have been like, "Yeah, I would have followed you." Maybe I should legit. change it back. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Um, so April 10th, tomorrow. Yeah. Is Golfers Day. Oh. We all gotta go to Top Golf. Are you putting that on? Is that? Are you? Is that real? Yeah. April it's 10th real. is Golfer's Day. Yeah. Gotta sneak into tea time before I leave for yeah. Philly. See, this, this guy's been trying to convince me and all of the homies to golf. Top golf, at yep. least. Top you golf. guys been to Top Golf. Top golf all is the time. Fun. It's but just as fun when you're <clears throat> out there. Golf, golf takes too long. It takes long. It takes long. Gotta, with, with the kids. Yeah, you gotta be out there, walk around. Yeah. You, you don't got to be that out there. You get to be out oh, there. Oh, you get to be out there. You're right. Yeah. What, what happened to our... Um, weren't we supposed to have another uh, tournament? When are we going to set that up? Spread good tournament. Spread good. <laughs> Some, someday. The last, good tournament. Oh, the last tourna- golf tournament I was at was with you. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember I'm much north, of it. But you guys were up. Yeah. I'm north for that. I didn't you even guys- golf. <laughs> we didn't golf. <laughs> Why? <laughs> they, had, they had this whole thing like, uh, all right, we're going to charge people 40 bucks to take a shot with Brody. Yeah. And I was like, bro, ain't nobody gonna want to take shots That's with me. Next to, thing I know, thousand dollars later, <laughs> I'm just like, that forty dollars. I was out, bro. I was night, like, night. you should yeah. put it, Nick or Brody. Yeah. Well, well he's yeah. just collectively taking it with me for what support. What I learned is support. All you guys do at golf is drink. You just drink, bro. Everybody just um, drinks. <laughs> you're not golfing. You're just drinking. Right. I mean, with a side of golf, I guess. Little. It's more so our therapy. Like you know, you just hang out. Well, so you can spend five being outside. You know, getting some fresh air. But it's also expensive. It is expensive that, you know, it blew up after COVID, you know, which I love. I'm not, you know, saying don't play golf. I want more people to play, expand the game. But it's getting more expensive because a lot more people are trying to play. Mm-hmm. There's this whole thing on um, on Instagram. There's like a, like the black market of, of tea times. You guys ever see that? No. So not to put anybody on blast, but um, there's people using like, I don't know if it's bots but they're 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 snagging all the, the oh, tea times yeah. when they get released, and then they're selling it on the black market. So oh, they, wow. they hit up um, either like a different chat, you know, WhatsApp or Telegram or whatever, and they're buying the ability to book the the tea time. So they'll give it to them. Some people make forty dollars every tea time, and then you still got to pay to play the court. So it's forty dollars yeah. on top. So. They're trying to break it down. Wow. It was on the news and everything. Hustle is real. So everyone's trying to find their hustle Damn. after COVID, bro. So and you can just do that online, huh? Yeah, there's people just snagging them up. So I don't know how they're doing it. You know, I don't want to put nobody on blast, but I heard it happens. Not saying I bought a tea time from there all the time, <laughs> but you know, you get desperate. I gotta play this course at this time. I'll pay forty dollars. It's fine. So, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. So. Well, it's an expensive hobby. We, we might get some golf influencers on, so yeah. hopefully they can convince us to golf. So we'll put you out there. Maybe. We'll bring you guys we'll out. We'll I'm do down this. to come out to the course. Let's do it. You know? I'm Let's down do to it. do the, the drinking part. <laughs> 
Forty dollars a shot. We're yeah. ready. There you go. Oh, no more. We're raising my prices this year. A <laughs> hundred at yeah, least. Yeah, for real. Give Good. yourself that, man. Know, you better right? than that. Right? You better than forty. Went up. <laughs> <laughs> inflation. A hundred. Right. Make it a hundred. Damn, inflation. We don't need to talk about inflation. Mm-mm. Man. This is the Spread Good that's podcast. This is Spread yeah. Good. That's, that's next week's podcast. Somebody else. Somebody else. Well, I just want to say, if anyone has any other thoughts on how to help somebody um, deal with a loved one losing their memory, please put it in the comments. Yeah. Like the episode. Like the Follow episode, us. please. Yes, sir. Anything else? Where can we uh, find you online? Where can people see Man, see all my, the good work pull, you do? Put my handle right here. It's private right though. Here, it's right. private. Right? Oh, you're gonna have private. to do the request. But you gotta add me. Request I'll with I'll a Venmo. You, with a Venmo. <laughs> no Venmo. I do this for free. I love y'all. You know, just just watch the videos, and then we're good to go. But yeah, yeah if I can help, or I just want to thank you guys for having me on, because you know, like I said, nobody really knows what OT is, and yeah. this is our month, so I'm glad you guys gave me the opportunity to. You know, have this platform, you guys' platform. You guys are killing it. I'm glad that you guys are doing this. I would have never thought this guy. So, Brody, you are putting this guy <laughs> out of his comfort <laughs> zone. Yeah. And I love it. I love, I'm here for all of it. So, thank you guys. Thank you guys for having all right, me. You got to be thank on you. the next one. You got to be on the live streaming Dang. podcast as well. No, nah, no yeah. live, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, 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 you coming. Oh, shoot. It's going to be wild. But no, man, thanks for being here. Thanks, guys. Spreading yeah. the good, adding the value. Always. Um, Life's a journey, man. But it is cool having good people yep. around through through it all. So, yep. if you like what you see, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and touch the bell. Touch it just a little tip tap. Smash it. Yeah. All right, you can smash it. <laughs> smash, smash it for Mark. Smash it for me. Hey, happy <laughs> OT. Is it OT Awareness Month? No, happy or just OT, OT month. month. Just all OT right. month. Happy OT month. Spread good, baby. Peace. Peace.